I introduced a state machine library to my 2D platformer so that it would be able to handle the different states such as jumping, falling, landing, and anything else that I want to add to my 2D character. I've over-exaggerated a couple of the movements, so if I just kind of hold jump, it will eventually time out and start falling. And we can see from the logs here, if I add some space and hold the jump, we transition from idle to jumping, from jumping to falling, from falling to idle, and so on. So we have a couple of different states. We have jumping, falling, landing, and idle. I've also included a couple of other states that aren't really being used right now. So this, as we transform the character around the, and we jump a little bit and we do whatever, you can see all of the different state transitions that are happening. And yes, I've over-exaggerated the jumping, the falling, the movement, so that it's not particularly fluid and or fun to play, but shows off exactly kind of what's going on here. So I can jump small, I can jump high, I can let it time out, and the states all update accordingly. There are two major crates that I've used for implementing this functionality. One is the LeafWing Input Manager, which handles all of the controller input. So I'm using kind of like what would be a PlayStation controller basically to control this, but I could also use my keyboard. LeafWing handles transforming any of the inputs from a keyboard or a controller or whatever else that I choose to use and translates that into actions that can be taken, which we'll cover in a second. I've chosen to use Static as the state machine library because it is a state machine library that's intended to take external events and process them into the state machine. In this case, external events are kind of like user input, right? Which means that I feel like it's one of the better choices for trying to do this. And of course, this whole system is built on top of Bevy, so we've got a bunch of Bevy libraries. So LeafWing is set up much like this. We have a platformer action enum that has a number of different sort of actions a person can take, such as moving right, left. Um, I have down and up here for some reason, but I'm not using them. I also have horizontal. And the other one that's going to be relevant is jump. We set all of that up by inserting a number of sort of key codes or key inputs or controller inputs and associating those with the different platformer actions. So for example, on a gamepad, if you use the left stick in the X direction, either left or right, it uses some threshold and then applies the horizontal action, basically. And you can see that in the same way we have keyboard inputs for left and right and things like that. So in this way, we get to abstract the inputs that we're using from the actions that those inputs are sort of semantically meaningful for. On top of that, I've used static to construct a state machine that has a little bit of global state, as well as a number of events that can apply to the state machine to transition the user from one state into another. These events are similar to, but not exactly the same as the platformer actions. So if a user tries to jump, for example, we might not want to let them based on what state they're currently in. So while we might receive a player input for the action, right, to jump, we may not want that to translate to an actual jump event because if, for example, we're already in the jumping state and somebody tries to jump, maybe we don't want them to be able to jump again. So this code is a little bit messy. I've kind of just figured out a way that I think I'm gonna move forward with this. And if you want a deeper dive into static, I actually have another video on static on the channel, so you can go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. So we've got this state machine. Its initial state is idle. These on dispatch and on transition are the debug logs that we're getting up in the console on the top left. So all those are doing are are when we dispatch an event or when we transition from one event to, or from one state to another state, we're logging those out. Otherwise, the only thing the state machine is currently responsible for is sort of tracking events when they happen. For example, if you are jumping, right, like on the left-hand side and you hit some milliseconds after you've jumped, we don't want you to be able to just go up forever, right? We don't want you to float. So we're gonna forcibly throw you into the falling category or falling state. So the state machine itself and these transitions and the states don't have access to the bevy systems, right? It doesn't have access to uh, bevy resources. It doesn't have the ability to query things inside of the bevy sort of graph of items. So I've kept the state machine itself pretty light in that I'm only doing transitions from one state to another, and then also storing some information. I've also got a system that constantly runs whenever we're playing the game. We query for the actions that a user is trying to apply, as well as any of the players that we're supposed to be able to control. I also query for the time here as a resource to compare it in certain states, like if we're jumping. We can then match on whatever state the player is currently in. So in this case, it's dot state on state machine. If the player is jumping and there was a last jump, so we have jumped at some point, if the time since the last jump 
is greater than 500 milliseconds, we can send a fall event to the state machine and it'll transition our little character into falling. So if I keep holding this and talk a little bit, you'll see that every sort of 500 milliseconds of jumping, our character gets forced into the falling state. We can also control what happens if you try to input a specific action when the player is in a specific state. So in this case, if we're in the idle state, for example, and the user just pressed jump, we can send the user into the jumping state with the time that that event happened. So the time at which they tried to jump. And what that means is that we can have a bunch of other systems responsible for how the character should be behaving in each of these states. So in this case, we have a jump system. And we query for a lot of the same things. We query for the actions that a given player is applying. And if they're jumping and they just released the jump button, we immediately send them into falling. So this is the kind of action where you would start jumping. You have the jump button held down. And then when the player releases the jump button, you want gravity to increase in sort of that Mario effect where you start floating up and then drop at like three times gravity or something like that. If there isn't an action that we need to handle and we're just in the jumping state, then we can apply any movement that we should be applying to the player character. In this case, it's a very simple, the character goes up by 10, 10 pixels. It doesn't matter what 10 means for us right now. But basically that's why the character is jumping here. That's why they keep raising as long as I have the button held down. And if I let go of the button, we immediately get sent into falling and so on. So this is interesting because it means that when we go to a more complicated jumping parabola, right, a more complicated sort of like Right now, we can jump all the way up to pretty much the top of the, or not actually, but um, we can almost jump up to the top of the top platform here from the ground, right? And we probably don't want to do that. We probably just want to be like able to jump something like this, something a little smaller. We don't want to be able to like skip a bunch. <laughs> so when we want to pattern out the first half of our jump here in a different manner, in a different formula, we can put that here and we can say, I wanted to jump this high or be able to jump this far or something like that. And instead of just setting the next position, setting sort of like Y plus 10, Y plus 10, Y plus 10, we can set it to the position gain on that parabola graph based on the delta time. So it gives us a lot of control in the way that we apply the jumping mechanic in the jumping state, but we also immediately get to transition into a different control mechanic if we're falling. So for example, I have a fall system here. So when we start falling, we check to see if our character controller is grounded, if it touched the ground, right? Which means that we've landed. If we've landed, we want the state machine to transition into being landed. In this case, I just have that going back to idle, but I'll probably change that to something else. And we have the same thing happening here. If we are in the falling state and we're not handling anything, then the player is falling at a rate of 20 pixels per second or something like that. So we kind of get to encapsulate how the player should be being affected into a system responsible for handling that state. And as we transition from state to state, those are pretty good boundaries for how the player should be behaving on screen or how the player should be being affected by things like gravity, right? So we can go from jumping to falling to landing to idle. And for example, we could store whenever we land, whenever we go transition to idle, sort of how long we've been idle. Because maybe we want to play an idling animation if you've been idling there and haven't given any input for the last 10 seconds or something. So that's where I'm at. You can see the system set up here. I add the jump system. It runs when we're playing. I add the horizontal system. It runs when we're playing. The machine events, the transition handlings always run. Fall only runs if we're playing. So I think there's an interesting aspect here of how well integrated is the state machine library. So for example, we've got these events that we're handling, but we don't have the ability to query any of the bevy system, right? Any of the bevy resources, any of the bevy, any of the bevy components, anything like that. So while it may be interesting to act, be able to access some of that data inside of the state machine, we do currently have to pass in any of that data manually if we want it to be there. So if we want to transition into the jumping state, we have to send a jump event and any state that we want to keep around, such as when the jump happened, when it started, we have to pass that to the state machine in this event and then store it somewhere so that we can deal with it later. So it might be nicer to have deeper integration, uh, but this is where I'm at. And I'm going to continue with this for the foreseeable future until I see something that is just absolutely too wrong with it. So a little bit of progress on the 2D platformer. If you're interested in the state machine library that I'm using, there's a video in the description. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.